Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be setting up Cubic SDR on a Raspberry Pi 4. So in a previous video, I did an unboxing of the RTL SDR dongle, and I'll put a link in the description to my SDR playlist. I'll also put a link in the description to the Raspberry Pi I'm using and the RTL SDR that I'm using on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I have the RTL SDR dongle plugged into the Raspberry Pi using a short USB extension cable. The dongle is kind of bulky, so it's hard to plug it in at the same time as the Ethernet cable and the mouse and keyboard. If you're using a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, it may not be an issue. So I have the antenna hooked up to the RTL SDR dongle, and I have it in a dipole configuration, the one that came with it in my kit, the one I linked to below. And if you pop off the middle cap on the antenna it came with, you'll see that there's two wires, one in the middle and one on the outside. The middle one I have pointing up, and the other one I have pointing down. So if you have any confusion about that, you can Google dipole antennas and kind of see how it's set up. Otherwise, just ask me in the comments. So now I will install Cubic SDR. So I'll open up a terminal. So the first thing you want to do is type sudo space app space update and hit enter. And this will update the package list on your computer. Next, you want to type sudo space app space install space cubic SDR. Hit enter. And then you want to hit yes here. And this will download the packages and install them. Okay, so that's installed. So if you want to run it from the command line, it would seem like you could type cubic SDR, but that doesn't work. It actually uses a capital C, like this. But I'm guessing most people will just uh, open it from the menu. So I'll close this out. Then I'll go to my Raspberry Pi menu and I'll go to other, and then cubic SDR. So I record this at 720p, so the screen will be a little bit more crowded than it will on say like a 1080p screen. So SDR devices came up, and I already have it plugged in. If you don't have it plugged in, you can plug it in now. And where you see local, it says generic RTL 2832U. So I'll select that, and I'll hit start. Okay. So now we have this started. You can see this is the waterfall here. Let me make this full screen. That's pretty much full screen. So I do want to say that I'm not an expert on SDR. I'm kind of making these videos so people can follow along with me. If I say anything that's incorrect, go ahead and correct me in the comments below. And go ahead and read the comments if you're new to this to see if anyone offers any information. So in the upper left here, we can choose FM, FM stereo, narrow band FM, AM. And then we have lower sideband, upper sideband, dual sideband, and IQ, which is quadrature. So I don't have any experience with these. Next, we have a zoomed in view just to the right of that. That'll show up when we click on our waterfall. And then you can see the analog of the audio here in the upper right, like a waveform. Then we have kind of like bookmarks and favorites on the left here. And here we have the frequencies. We can look at them and look at the waterfall. So this scans these frequencies and you can see where it's being transmitted here. So if I click on this with my mouse, right in the middle, a radio will come up. Okay, don't know if you can hear that. So this M on the right here uh, mutes it. And I can't play a lot of this due to copyright uh, issues. So this is FM mono. We could click on FMS here. And I'll have FM stereo. Of course, I uh, record this with one microphone, so you won't be able to hear that. So where we have frequency, bandwidth, and center frequency here. Frequency is the frequency we're tuned into. So if I click over here to the right, we have 104. And this is actually 1041, so I'm not quite on it. So I can go and click up or down on these to change it. I can also hit spacebar and I can just type 104.1 megahertz. I'll hit enter. And now we're on 104.1 megahertz. So turn that on, we have radio. Then bandwidth is how wide it is. So you can see the distance across here. We can grab this and we can open that up or narrow it. So you typically want 200 kilohertz for like FM radio. So I'll go in here, I can hit space, I can type 200 kilohertz, I'll hit enter. That's where it was before. And center frequency is the center frequency for the waterfall. So if I go in here, well, I just changed it, okay. So now we have 1041. 
If we want to change it to say 103.3, I can go in here, hit space, 103.3 megahertz. And now you can see it's centered on that. But we're actually still tuned into 104.1. So I'd have to click on this to actually tune into it. And I am using a Raspberry Pi 4. I did try this on the Raspberry Pi 3 and it did run. You could maybe tweak some settings too to make it run better. But like anything, it's gonna run better on a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't know how well this would run on the older Raspberry Pis. But you can use some command line uh, utilities with SDR that would probably run on the old Raspberry Pis very well. So towards the top here, you see this is the zoomed in view. So you're seeing the same thing here, but just more zoomed in so you can look at it. And then the audio over here is going. And there's these little bars to adjust things. So if you hover over, you'll get a little tooltip come up. This is, says current signal level. On the right here, we say current demodulator gain level. Here we have spectrum averaging speed. Then down here, we have the waterfall speed. So if I drag this up, the waterfall will increase in speed. And drag it down, it will slow down. So you'll notice to the right or left of these FM frequencies, these little areas here. And from what I understand, that is HD radio or hybrid digital radio. So like on my car, I have HD1, HD2. But uh, as far as I know, this software can't tune into them. There is software that can. I just have not played with it at all. So if you say like this radio station here, we're on 103.3, you can go over here to the left under bookmark, and you can say new group. And I'll just call this FM radio, and it will add the bookmark under that. So we see here we have FM radio. I'll go here to 1025, and then I can go down here to bookmark, and it says new group or FM radio, so I'll choose FM radio, and now we'll have both of them under FM radio, under bookmarks here. Like I said, this is easier to see when you have a 1080p resolution. It's kind of scrunched on here. So another easy thing to tune into is weather radio. So if you go to the NOAA Weather Radio website, and I'll put a link in the description to this, you can find the frequency for your area. So I'm, I'm in Iowa. So the frequency is 162.55. So I'll go back into Cubic SDR. I'll click on frequency. I'll hit space. I'll say 162.55 megahertz. I'll hit enter. And here we see it here in the middle. I'll turn the sound back on. And it's hard to hear. And the reason is, is because it uses a narrow band. So it's at 200 uh, kilohertz right now. I'll hit NBFM. Decatur, and now we have uh, 12.5 kilohertz. Harding, Jasper, Lucas, Madison, Maska, Marion, Marshall. So I don't know if you can hear this. I'll turn it up. Story, Tama, Wapalo, Warren, Wayne, okay. Winnebago. So that's the weather radio. Right now, we're in a tropical storm in Iowa, which is kind of odd for us. So I'll switch back to a radio here with my bookmark. Okay, and when I switch with the bookmark, it changes the bandwidth, center frequency, and frequency. So another thing you can do is detect radio signals with this. Um, so an easy one to do is 433 megahertz. So I'll go to that, I'll type 433 megahertz, I'll hit enter. And here we have 433 megahertz. And I have a little keychain that controls an outlet um, that you plug in the wall and then plug a lamp into it. So it's like a little key fob. And if I hit a button on there, you'll see the frequency on here. So we see it right around here, 433.9. So you can see I'm pushing it here. And it has an on and off. So this is on, this is off. And this should also work with a lot of garage door openers and other things. So if you had a remote like that and you weren't sure if it was working, you could test it with the SDR. So typically you would want to test it prior to it not working. So when it's known working, you could test it. And then later if it's working, you can try it again because you want to know what it looks like on the uh, SDR. So that's all for this video. I just wanted to do a quick overview of Cubic SDR. It can get you started. I'm doing more videos on it. So check out that SDR playlist I'll put down below. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.